as we enter the park, we're greeted with the first topiary of the festival. It's uh, Asha, Valentino, and Star from the new Disney Wish movie. I know a lot of people I've been uh, watching their videos haven't seen this movie yet. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Let me know, did you see it? Uh, what do you think of it? I think it was a great movie. Uh, a lot of people hating on Disney with their movies recently, but I think this one did a really good job. I love the way they incorporated uh, all the other movies, uh, little hidden Easter eggs in there. Good morning from Epcot. Today's journey has taken us to the International Flower and Garden Festival. The Flower and Garden Festival is definitely a celebration of life, a celebration of spring. Uh, this has to be my second favorite next to the Festival of the Arts. I do enjoy the food and wine and the festive holidays, but there's just something about the Festival of Arts that is number one for me and Flower and Garden is right there as, as a really close second. Uh, it's it's magical to come and see the celebration of spring, to see all the flowers in bloom, uh, the butterfly garden, the topiaries, all the delicious food. This year, there's a bunch of new topiaries as we seen when we walked in, Disney's Wish topiary, topiary with uh, Asha, Valentino, and Star. So it was the very first that we found of all the new topiaries. There's gardens all over and the butterfly garden. So we're gonna wander around, check out all the topiaries first thing. And then as the food stands start to open, hit those up, try some of the new foods, finish out the passport. I've got the passport here. Uh, Flower and Garden Festival runs through May 27th. It just started on Wednesday. So this is the opening weekend for it. Um, lots of new adventures to find. Um, I know there's the hide and seek games. I think there's a um, an egg hunt that you can do. And then also uh, the Spike the Bee uh, scavenger hunt. So we'll check those out when we get over to Porta Entry or somewhere with those scavenger hunt cards are. We'll kind of show that off a little bit, uh, explain how that works. And maybe we can see what the prizes are for those of you that are interested in doing that. Um, I had early morning this morning with the stay at Drury. So I see everybody starting to go into the park. So we're going to head in. We're going to check out some topiaries right away. Let's go. Bubbles. See over here in the new showcase gardens. Wow, quite the line forming for the figment topiary. Now, figment used to be over in front of the imagination pavilion, and they've moved him here this year. I would assume since they have up the uh stanchions or whatever you call them for the ropes that uh, there must be some type of a photo op here that everybody's waiting for. Definitely is nice getting into the parks early. Epcot never really seems to be super busy in the mornings. Seems like most people show up later in the day, start coming around 11, 12 o'clock, starts getting busy. We've got some more topiaries here. We've got Pluto, Mickey, Minnie. 
old Chippendale down here with some carrots and corn. How many else? How many other people out there love the Doonies? My wife has quite the collection of Dooney, Dooney and Bird purses, and uh, ears and pins. We've got the, the festival spirit jersey. Here's the back. Front's got mini on it. like maybe uh, some sort of a bag or something. Cute little sun hat up there. Right to the left of Lion King, you find Simone and Pumbaa. So, I think this is a different location as well. I don't think they were here last year. I don't really remember. It seems like they've moved quite a few of them around. Hey ducks, how you doing? Oh. Disney Ducks. Say hi guys. Yeah. There they are. Look at that. Ducks in the monorail. And the Imagination Pavilion. Over there by that sign is where Figment is normally at. But as we've seen, he's now in the Showcase Gardens. Some more giant butterflies. Usually, or at least last year, Pooh Bear was back there behind the tent with a butterfly net pretending to catch butterflies. So I'll have to look around and see if we see Pooh Bear anywhere. And looks like this walkway is closed off, so we'll have to go down and around. But, like I said, I thought I seen little Bo Peep, so we'll go see Woody and Bo Peep. Oh, those are cute. They've got the little blocks with the planters. Oh my goodness, look at the sheep. So cute. Showcase gardens now that the wall's down, but you still get a wall over there on the side again. So soon that'll be open and we'll see less walls. We've got the blossoms of fragrance here presented by Sensi. And this is a neat little um, display. We've got all the potted flowers, but then as you go around, um, they have these billboards, or I guess um, call them scent boards, where they give off the scent of uh, what they say. So this one smells like rose. You've got plumeri over there. I think there's a mint one over on the other side.
Oh, and Canto, look at that. Right, right in the middle, up front and center. How amazing is that? How beautiful is this? I love the toucan on his arm. And the butterfly. Look at the little details in the dresses. She's got a candle over there. And you've got a couple look like dumbbells over here on her dress to represent her strength. Beautiful work. Lots of people at Encanto, and rightfully so. It's a beautiful piece. Great movie. Love Encanto. Uh, oh, and here's your um, game cards for Spike's pollination exploration. Oh, ex pollination exploration. Say that ten times fast, three times fast. So. $9.99, you get the card, like I said, when you go around, you find Spike, then you get the stickers and you stick them in the locations that coincide with the sign that he's next to. And then there'll be a prize. Let's walk in and see what the prize is. Some cute Wish merchandise in here. Look at that, a little clip on, Valentino clip on. All these magnetic so you can clip onto your shirt. Oh, so there's your prizes for the your little game boards that you get. So you get the orange bird and Coco, Spike the Bee, and then a butterfly. So you get those it's like a little bags game. Pretty neat. little garden area over here some crates with uh, different things planted in them uh, looks like maybe carrots in one some lettuce I don't know is that carrot maybe that's carrots I don't know kind of looks like it getting the grill ready over there I don't know we'll try it we'll see I don't know, impossible. They're definitely adding in a lot more vegan and vegetarian options. Um, trying to make sure that there's something for everybody. And that's a good thing. I mean, you come to these festivals and if you are vegan or you're allergic to something and there's nothing for you to eat, it's obviously no fun. So it's, it's really good that they're adding in a wide variety of foods for everybody. Oh, another topiary here. Dante is so colorful. What a neat topiary. How fun is that? Oh, these are cute. Look at the Mickey ears. The only thing they're missing from the festival ears is the pin in the middle. How cute are those? Nice little photo spot. Oh, the line for the margaritas. Look at that. Opens at 11. Everybody waiting for the margarita. And I'm sure La Cava Tequila is the same way. It usually is. Massive line in there. Love the avocado tequila. I was kind of hesitant about trying it. Definitely don't taste the avocado. Great margarita. Then over in Norway, we get the troll. He's cool. This is where the stage is set up for festive holidays where you see one of the, the Santas. Yeah. 
So we've got a festival market over here. Looks like a bunch of jewelry. Oh, made from bamboo. Handmade jewelry from natural materials. Bamboo, cantaloupe seeds, flower petals, amaranth, coffee beans, sesame seeds, quinoa, and more. Wow, that's interesting. I'm intrigued that they can make those types of things from see like look at this seeds cantaloupe seed bracelets how neat is that and it looks like a cantaloupe seed necklace huh very neat i would have never imagined really neat bag there oh orange bird moves around oh orange bird comes out oh i think he's tied in there a little bit that's neat though look at that like a little pop-up Oh, that is Germany, the Germany Pavilion. They have a really potent um, pear, I don't even know, oh, like a brandy shot back there. Unbelievably strong. So every festival they change the banners in there and I'm sure there's other things that they do but I really only know about the banners. If you know more about this train set and the things that they do uh, for the different festivals or different things, let us know. Be interested to know what all they do with this train set. A lot of fun to watch those kids love it and you had little train rides that you could take around a replica of Walt's backyard I think that'd be neat okay. all right oh we've got Snow White and a7 dwarf which one is that dopey maybe Let's see, and then the other seven, the other six doors. Oh yeah, so it's Snow White and Dopey, and then the other six doors are on the other side. Oh, look at Snow White dancing, got her foot kicked up, having a good time. Or is that bashful? I don't know. Which 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 of the seven doors is that? Is that dopey or bashful? Let me know. I have to look that up. And here's the other six with their pickaxes, ready to head out to work. Got to go find those gems, right? Potato pancakes at the Our Market Farmers Market in Germany, which gives me my first stamp for the passport book. Uh, so here's the potato pancake right here. It uh, really is like uh, hash browns with some applesauce on it. But I've had this before. Do you like hash browns or potatoes? It's good. It's got some good seasoning to it. It's 
It's what you would expect uh, uh, potato pancakes. It's really hash brown and the sauce. So, if you like hash browns, you like this. I don't know that I would have bought it if it wasn't on the, the um, passport for the Garden Grays challenge. Just because I've had it before, and it's nothing that's stellar out of this world to have to get. It's a good filler item. But I think the biggest thing I'm excited for from that booth is the warm berry strudel. It's a cheese Danish thing. Nice crisp dough on the outside, fluffy on the inside. There's the layer of cheese in there, mixed berries on top. I think it would be a good thing to do is if you don't drop it like I just did, uh, but you could take your fork, open that up a little bit, and then put these mixed berries inside there. Let me so I just stuff the inside so now. Instead of just having the cheese in there, you've got the cream, or I guess it's cream cheese, but you've got the cheese in there, and now you've stuffed the berries that are on the plate inside the opening of it. I guarantee that's going to make this much better. It's good as it is, this is going to make it much better. So now, instead of your berries falling off the top, they're inside the cheese. So now you get the flavors of the berries and the cheese and the dough. Very good. If you like sweets, you like baked goods, strudel is definitely one to get. Um, once I get through the day, kind of read everything, put up a reel, maybe a vertical short on YouTube, just kind of rate each of the items. Potato pancakes, you got to get them maybe unless you see other items on there, you get multiples of another item to get the stamps. They're okay, but the strudel, that's a good one. How cute is that? And United States. So I just spoke with a couple back there, a lady in the tram that said the food stand at the American Pavilion has some really good food and they got a, like a rum punch. It looked really good seems like it'd be very refreshing so I think we're gonna check that out maybe for the first drink of the day we'll get this rum punch whatever it is we'll take a look at the sign see what it says it is oh the uh, magnolia terrace so it's the bayou cocktail spiced rum coconut rum fruit punch and minute made orange juice and uh, I think that muffalata panini and the gumbo, I don't know, I think they might be new. Bananas foster bread pudding, $4.75. That sounds amazing too. I like bread pudding. Um, I had the bananas foster crepe at Universal Mardi Gras and that was phenomenal. So I may have to get that too. Maybe not all right now. I may have to wander back around and get that or I don't know, I have a reservation for tomorrow too, so maybe after Gideon's I'll stop in here, grab a few more things before I head back to Savannah. Oh, and there's Tiana. Look at that. 
I can't remember if she was here last year or not, or if she was somewhere else. So what I got here is the muffaletta panini, and the description on this says uh, ham salami, mortadella, provolone, and Swiss with the olive salad. So I'll give this a try. Good. Good. I, uh, I enjoy muffaletta. Uh, I've gotten them in the past at places like Jason's Deli, and uh, they're usually really good. This uh, this is really tasty. The olive salad really stands out with that ham and Swiss in there. That's delicious. So they do have here a chicken gumbo and as well as a bananas foster bread pudding that I showed you on the sign. I did not get those. I'm going to save that for later. Maybe I'll come back around tonight get the gumbo and the bread pudding. But for now, I'm going to pass on that. And uh, I did get the Bayou cocktail. So here's the spiced rum, coconut rum, fruit punch, and orange juice. Top with the orange and um, I would think that's probably a black cherry. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's really refreshing. Ooh, I'm gonna have to get that recipe. That's gonna be a good one right there. Good summer drink. I like that a lot. Very good. Hello, out of the American Pavilion. Oh, another festival market over here. Look at the little bonsai trees, the little plants. That's cool. All of that little pot of horrors, little Venus fly traps. used to be that my favorite topiary was down here in Japan. But I think Groot's got it now. We'll come down here, check out the dragon. I still love it. I think it's awesome. Fantastic topiary. But Groot, I think, takes the top now. Definitely an awesome. I need to get back over to see Groot, check it out, see if they play some more music. We got to see one song earlier, so. Hopefully I'll play some more. Fushi. The fushi is delicious. Another 
another festival market. This time filled with all the dolls. So if you're a small world lover, that's the spot for you. Lots of neat little dolls from every country in there. Beautiful Morocco. And the Tangerine Cafe. I've yet to eat there. I've been here a lot. I always eat the festival food. I very seldom eat the restaurants inside of Epcot because there's so much food with the festival. La Isla Fresca, Coconut Trebuchet. So this is the next item on our Garden Grays. So we'll stop in here, we'll grab that. And I might just grab another drink, I don't know. We'll see, it sounds delicious actually. They have a tropical breeze with Don Q Limon Rum. So I bet you that's pretty refreshing. Let me try that and then we'll go back to water for a little bit. Next stop, uh, La Isla Fresca. You see I got the next stamp here and uh, the item on this was the coconut tray lache. So here's what that looks like. It's pretty amazing looking. Like I said, I do remember having this before and I remember that it was heavily coconut. So we'll try this out and see. So last time that I got this, it was super, super moist, heavily covered in the coconut milk. Um, this time not so moist, but it has a, a distinct flower taste. It's almost like the ingredients were mixed completely. I don't know. It may have just been that bite because it's just the one bite I tasted flour. After that, it, um, it's okay. And then I did get the tropical breeze with the lime rum. Ooh, that tastes like drinking straight, straight lime juice. And we're coming on about one o'clock. You can see the park's gotten drastically busier than it was this morning. Lots of people around the topiaries, lots of people in food, food lines. Oh, I see more. There's Beauty and the Beast. It's Belle and the Beast. And I see Lumiere over there, so Cogsworth must be somewhere. I think Cogsworth was always, oh yeah, Cogsworth's right there with Lumiere. Let's go over and check them out, and then we'll go over and see Belle and the Beast. Oh, and look at Cogsworth's clock in there.
guess one thing that I haven't really done is go into many of the shops in Epcot. And I've gone into some of them to do pin trading, but there's lots of perfume shops. We've got the Skyliner over here. I love taking that over to Hollywood Studios. That's a lot of fun. You got the boat. I've stayed at the boardwalk. I've stayed at the beach club before. We've utilized that boat. That's a lot of fun too. Always, always great that they have multiple modes of transportation to get around. So let's think about that. In Disney World, you have the buses, the monorail, the Skyliner, and the boats. What is your favorite mode of transportation? Down here, we've got an English tea garden. This is normally where you see Alice in Wonderland. Alice will be here, sometimes the Mad Hatter, not very often, but usually Alice. So we got Twinnings, Glow and Peach White Tea. Oh, we walk down the pathway and they have all the teacups with the different things. So we've got a Lemongrass Peppermint. Raspberry and Lemon. Hmm, that sounds good. Chamomile, Honey and Vanilla. That's always a good tea for before bed. Green tea and jasmine, and there's Spike. Look at that. I need to get one of those for my garden at home. He's kind of cute. Oh, and then behind me I have a uh, spiced chai. They're all over the place. Got cinnamon. All right, but I want to know what's on this tree. <laughs> The gardens here are beautiful any time of year. Looks like there's a Mickey topiary here. And it looks like he has lights inside of him, so we may have to return tonight. Oh, maybe those aren't lights. They might just be twist ties to tie the greens around the wire. And there's an elephant. You know, it'd be really cool if they had heffalumps and woozles. We need to go find Winnie the Pooh. They need to put heffalumps and woozles where Winnie the Pooh is. So there's some more gardens over here. Here we've got another garden area. Spearmint. Lots of change being thrown into the well. Making their wishes. Shakespeare Garden. William Shakespeare often used flowers in exotic gardens to help set the scene for his plays. Just as often, the bard used plants as symbols and metaphors. Take a look through this literary garden and rediscover plants with a poetic past. Oh, I spy more topiaries. Here we go. See Captain Hook, Peter Pan, and Tick Tock Croc. That guy kind of looked like Dr. Facilier that just walked by. I don't know if I got him on camera or not. All he needed was the taller hat. Northern Bloom, the Canada food posts always has a line. It doesn't matter which festival this is. There's always a line at this booth. 
always have delicious food. Looks like this time they've got a seared scallop and a beef tenderloin tip. Chocolate maple whiskey cake. So yeah, we'll have to come back here for sure. Not on the list for the garden grays, but we definitely got to come back. And I know I want to stop at Swirl Showcase. They have a, um, a nitro frozen dessert that I want to get. Looked really neat. More merchandise, pins. Well, there's a different pin. Look at that one. All right, we got our next stamp. Um, three down. Two to go. So we made a trip here at uh, Brunch Cot. I stopped off and got the avocado toast. That is just, uh, this could actually be served at the Fest of the Arts. It's just a, a beautiful dish. Got some edible flowers in there. This is uh, avocado toast with marinated tomatoes, plant-based cheese crumbles on toasted ciabatta. And then I also got a coffee cocktail. This is uh, Joffrey's coffee with milk, uh, vanilla vodka, and Kahlua, and a coffee liqueur, which I thought Kahlua was coffee liqueur, so I guess it kind of confuses me that there's Kahlua and coffee liqueur. But I think that's the same thing that they do for the Viking coffee as well, is it has a coffee liqueur and a Kahlua in it. So, you know the difference between coffee liqueur and Kahlua. Post up in the comments and let me know because I don't really know what the difference is. I know I used to own a bakery and at the bakery we would make tiramisu and in that tiramisu we would use uh, coffee liqueur which was Kahlua. So I don't know. Let me know. But I had a sip of this already. It's very good if you like coffee, the Kahlua, the vanilla really gives it a creamy flavor in there and a little bit of milk in there for the cream. Let's dig into this avocado toast. I got some ducks over here that want some too, so I don't know. Disney ducks, they love their scraps. Yeah, I like it. All right, I got another stamp. So one left and we get the festival treat. So I stopped by and got the grilled street corn uh, from Epcot Farmer's Feast. It's over here between Creations and Test Track. And uh, it's a savory garlic spread with a plant-based cheese. So here we go with the plant-based cheese again. Um, very small ears of corn. I don't think I've ever seen such small ears of corn. So I'm gonna guess these were grown here. Um, very small. 
check that out. Ain't that cute? Just a tiny ear of corn. Um, so you got the garlic spread. They dip it. They dip it into a garlic butter, and then they sprinkle the cheese, seasoned cheese, on top of it. So this uh, it smells delicious. We'll see how it tastes. You know, it's very reminiscent of a, like a Mexican street corn. I've ever had the opportunity to buy uh, street corn cups from vendors in little carts. It'll look almost like an ice cream cart, you know, the little ice cream carts. Um, I spent some time in Texas and all, all around Texas, especially in El Paso, um, out in front of all the little stores, grocery stores, places like that, uh, there would be people selling street corn. And you can get a cup of street corn and very similar taste. This is very good, uh, very reminiscent of that. I definitely like this a lot. Plant-based cheese or not, it still tastes good. All right, this stop, I did not get a stamp. I stopped at Swirled Showcase. Like I said, I wanted to try the liquid nitro honey mascarpone cheesecake. Mine was not in the nitro very long. Uh, there were some that were in there a little bit longer. I was kind of handed the wrong one. Um, how this would normally look is it would be a clump that was smashed down. Um, the nitrogen freezes it really fast. And then they smash it with a mallet. I'll show you in the video. Uh, and then it would just be a like a puff broken down into an area, drizzled with the honey with some blueberries on the sides. This one did not stay in the nitrogen long enough to the fact that now you can see that it's just kind of melted already. Uh, I can tell you it's gonna be equally as delicious. The only thing that nitrogen did was freeze it for presentation. So the taste isn't gonna be any different. It's not very sweet at all. You can tell that the the mascarpone hasn't really been sweetened. Uh, it does have a good a good flavor to it with the blueberries. The honey adds the sweetness to it. It's good. I don't know, I'd, I'd say probably a seven or so. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that this is something I would get multiple times or I'd probably buy it again just because it is delicious, has a good taste to it, but I'm not gonna say that it's uh, the greatest dessert in the, the festival by far. But it is good. And I have, uh, one stamp left to get, so we're gonna go over to Refresh Mal Post to get that last stamp because it's a seasonal fruit parfait. So I think with all the stuff that I've eaten today, I should probably eat a little bit of fruit. Um, the other choice were the strawberry shortcake, which is at the same stand for the corn on the cob, a plant-based buffalo chicken poutine. I'm not a poutine fan, so I'm gonna pass on that. Um, and then the Impossible Farmhouse Meatballs. I've had those. Um, it's nothing for me. So I'm going to get the fruit. And then there's a couple other things I want to try, like the scallops and things like that. So I'll eat these. We'll wander around. We'll get some more things to eat and drink. And we'll hope that the weather withholds for the fireworks. All right. The darkness has set in. Everything's illuminated. We'll see how things record now. Found Florida Fresh. 
If you take the pathway from swirls and the um, honey place here, it sells the chicken and waffles, and you follow it up past Goofy, like you're going to Imagination Pavilion, you will find it. Uh, the unfortunate thing up there is there's no tables, which is weird because there's some spots as you're walking to wrap around back to the World Showcase um, that they could have put some tables over there. So if you go up there, grab it, come back down, find some tables back over by on the World Showcase. But here's the grilled warm water lobster tail. And that's got a key lime butter to it. So I'm really interested in trying that. Let's pull that. Let's pull that meat right out of that tail. While I was in line, there were some other people asking the cast member if they like the lobster and the cast member hadn't had it yet. They haven't had a break since um, a day off since the festival started so they didn't have a chance to come in um, but they did say that this line has been steady from open to close for lobster. So if you want it get up there and get it. The line wasn't too long it went pretty quick. I'd say I waited about 10 minutes. So I think because it's hidden up there and if people aren't looking at the maps to see where it's actually at you're probably not finding it because it's way off the beaten path and with the with the construction walls up here and the inability to get to imagination showcase or imagination pavilion um, then most people aren't walking up that way. The crowds are pretty low because it just wraps back around over to the uh, garden. And we got the monorail behind us, that's pretty cool. I didn't pick this table because of that, but that's a pretty neat thing. More unlike and we are different. A rhapsody of rhythms that unites us and connects us to the commonalities of the heart. Thank you. 
here's the dual screen that I was talking about I was going to do with the food. It just didn't work out. But it seems like it works pretty good for this. Again, picture in picture as I'm leaving the park, you can see what I see as I'm leaving. Um, hopefully you all had a wonderful day. I had a great time today and I appreciate you being with me on the journey. If you like the videos, want to see more of them, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified when more videos come up. It's definitely, there's a lot to do in these festivals, you can't cover everything in one day. I did everything I could without riding any rides and I still miss so much of this. Um, I believe I've seen all the topiaries and I did get a lot of food but there's still a lot more to go so maybe next weekend we'll come back down and we'll have some more flower garden festival eats maybe ride some rides I do wish I would have rode Guardians of the Galaxy but I forgot about it and didn't get the view all right we'll see you next time